Hey everyone, I'm Kurt from Hammerly Ceramics. Last week we printed a bunch of these planters on my Potterbot clay 3D printer. And this week we are going to be attaching the feet to the bodies and then we're gonna work on some finishing techniques to kind of get rid of these 3D printing lines and make it more of a finished product. Um, this isn't a necessity, but um, for what I wanna make, I really think it's gonna be important to give these outside surfaces a different texture for glazes and um, just to look a little different. I personally think that the 3D printed clay look is a little overdone and I, I really never think of 3D printed pieces as a final product. I always think that there's more that you need to do to um, do something interesting with them. So, first thing we're gonna do is I am gonna take these four feet and attach them to this planter. So there we have it, the four feet fit on there like that. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use this metal rule that, metal rib that is serrated. And then I have some slip that's made of that same clay and we're going to score and slip these feet so that they're glued on there and they'll survive the firing without popping off. And you'll notice that these aren't perfect. Um, the prints don't line up dead even. It's uh, the 3D clay printer doesn't print as accurately as you might hope, but it does a good enough job that once I attached all these feet and clean them up and do some finishing techniques on them, glaze them and fire them that you won't be able to notice um, those inaccuracies from the printer. So now that these are roughly attached, I am going to clean up the edges a little bit. Now because of the way that the pattern is on here, there's no way that I can clean these up to look completely um, blended in, um, which is why uh, it's not a problem that I'm doing these multi-piece prints and attaching them after the fact is because I'm not gonna leave that 3D printed texture bare. Because I'm gonna process it so much, these connections need to be cleaned up a little bit, but it's not a huge issue if they don't look perfect. And then once I'm done cleaning this up, I'm gonna move on to this more narrow and tall planter and do the same thing, and I'll show you guys a different angle of that. There we go, all wrapped up ready to keep that thing from drying out. And we're gonna move on to the next one and I'll show you guys more of a close up of that one so you can see what I'm doing. So now we have the feet attached to the 3D printed planter and we are gonna figure out some different finishing techniques. So I have a couple that I've already done. This one, this one, and this one involve mixing up a thick slip and then spraying it out of a drywall texture gun onto the pieces. And I'll see if I can show that in this video. But then this one and this one are both just slip brushed onto the outside in different ways to kind of cover up that texture. I have another way that I want to do that with this one. And then with the other big one, I'm going to try something different as well. Um, so for the next firing, we're just going to have a bunch of different stuff to test and just see how it works out. So here we go. 
So I'm gonna add a texture to this planter. This is just gonna be by hand and it's just an idea that I had. So we'll see what happens. I have no idea if it's gonna work or not. By the way, this is just slip made with the same exact clay. It's not deflocculated or anything. I've just whipped it up so it's even and I'm sticking it to the outside surface. While this piece is just about leather hard, it should stick, but um, we'll have to wait and see. So if you couldn't tell already, I've uh, definitely frosted a couple cakes in my day. Um, and that definitely came in handy experience-wise doing this. Um, and this is an interesting texture on the outside of the piece, but this isn't really what I'm going for with this particular one. So I'm just gonna keep going. I am gonna use this paintbrush and try to give it a texture with that now that it's completely covered in slip. I don't know how I feel about this. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I feel like I need maybe a paintbrush with firmer bristles or some other kind of tool. Let's go at it. Let's try this metal rib for a while. I just, I don't, I don't know. This isn't, this isn't doing what I want it to do. So this really um, helped remove some excess material, smoothed it out to um, conform to the curves of the piece a little bit more. It's not the it's not the texture that I want in the final piece, but it definitely was a good step along the way. Um, I'm wondering if I just wait for it to firm up a little bit and then go at it with a wet sponge to kind of smooth it out from here. This is, uh, this is interesting. This is um, serving its purpose. I'm spending some time simply experimenting, simply playing with, um, playing with new ideas before I get back to making stuff my normal work. Um, I'm gonna have to think about this. Probably gonna let it dry a little bit and then come back to it. We'll see. So while that other one is drying a little bit, we're gonna work on this big one. Um, for this one, instead of adding material right off the bat, I'm gonna use this really corrugated metal rib and try to um, just kind of get rid of this surface texture quickly with a tool like this and change it to a different surface texture. Okay, so the outside of this is roughed up and it definitely got rid of that super even texture from the printer. I cleaned up some of the connection points and some of the bulges on here. Um, this, this, what I'm doing right now is giving me a different kind of idea of how I think about what I'm doing with the 3D printer. Um, I personally never like to think of the 3D printer as a finished product. So many people, not only with clay, but also with plastic, they, they think about this as the final product. When it comes out of the printer, it's just done. Um, I, I don't like that. I, I think that they're tools to be used, but just like when you throw something on the wheel, 
Um, it shouldn't be just thrown in the wheel and then fired and then done. Um, so I really am starting to think that I'm gonna use the printer to get things the size that I want and to get the geometrical perfection that I'm looking for as far as the symmetry of these pieces and just the design in general that I make in the computer. But um, once they're done with that, there will be, there will always be this kind of finishing component by hand through whatever techniques that I decide I really want to go forward with. stop there for now it's definitely covered up the texture so I'm gonna let it firm up on the surface a little bit um, we'll probably switch back to the smaller one depending on how dry it is and see um, what we want to do with that one next so we're back to the smaller one. It is still very soft and wet on the surface. So I think I'm gonna wrap these up in plastic and let them sit overnight. I am getting ready to do the very last of these big 3D printed pieces, put the surface texture on. This one was done by hand and it's looking pretty good. I'm happy with it, but I want to try this one with the spray gun. So I'm gonna show you guys that. I did something a little different this time. So I have my slip prepared to spray out of that spray gun and I'll go over how exactly I do this in a different video, but it's the same clay that's used for the 3D printing. It's just deflocculated with Darvan and sodium silicate. And then um, this time I've actually mixed in these nylon fibers that I got um, for reinforcing concrete. Uh, I blended them up in a food processor so they would be a lot more fine. But these fibers are gonna go into that slip and then when I spray it onto the surface of this piece, it's hopefully gonna give it just a little bit more reinforcement as it dries. So cracks are less likely to appear and um, the surface texture is gonna actually stay on. So we'll see what happens with that. Let's do the spraying now. Here we are outside in my spray booth. This is my drywall texture gun that I use to spray the slip onto the pieces with. Behind me is the big vase piece on a banding wheel centered and ready to go. So we're just gonna take this slip that is impregnated with the nylon fibers and we're gonna spin that thing up and we're gonna spray it out of this gun. Here we go. So it's looking good. We got good coverage. There's a lot of wet clay on there now. I'm hoping that because I used the driest clay possible to spray slip onto, or I mix up the clay as dry as possible before I deflocculate it, that um, it's not gonna add enough moisture to the piece for it to crumble apart as we watch it. Um, but I really like how that turned out. All the slip is adhering. It's not dripping down significantly. Uh, so now we will dry it as slow as possible and see how it works. So I spent the last week and a half uh, coming up with techniques to additively um, reduce the texture from the 3D printer. And it's been an interesting experience. I have some that work really great and some that don't work so great, um, but there's a lot more testing to do. Uh, so we did a couple different things. The first thing was to use um, my drywall texture gun that was full of thickened slip to spray onto the surface of these pots. And this had varying levels of success with different thicknesses. Um, the one that you just saw a video of, unfortunately I don't have any footage of it actually falling apart, but um, the big one that was sprayed in the video a little earlier 
fell apart completely. The weight um, of the slip and the added moisture that it introduced um, caused it to just uh, weigh itself down and tear itself apart. Uh, this one was coated with a slip that was mixed with um, tiny nylon fibers to give it some more strength as it dried. And I, after this thing fell apart, I let it sit out in the blowing air from the HVAC system. Uh, some parts dried far more rapidly than others and we didn't have any cracking after the fact. So I think that this is gonna be an important thing going forward, but I just need to do it at a different time or do it in multiple layers to get enough slip accumulated that gives me the result that I want uh, while it doesn't weigh the thing down to tear it apart. Ideally, I would love to have these pieces bisque fired before I spray on the slip. However, in my experiments, it just hasn't worked that well. And as soon as you spray wet slip onto even a wet, already bisque surface, it, as it dries, the clay obviously shrinks and the bisque surface has already shrunk. So it just flakes off and it's terrible. Um, you can see examples of that in some of these pieces where as the, um, the clay shrunk over the 3D printed part, it started to crack itself apart. I'm learning how to control that in ways that could lead to cool surfaces, um, but also ways to eliminate it in situations when I don't want it. Um, coming to the last techniques, this works well for the forms that I'm using now and I even did it on this larger piece. So these ones, a bunch of these were actually finished by hand. So I took the pieces out of the printer and while they're still leather hard, I mixed up a batch of slip and I applied it with my hands in a couple layers and then just smoothed it out and gave it kind of um, a surface texture that looks really handmade. And in most cases, I'm really happy with that texture and it's gonna be great for glazing. It is um, pretty time consuming though. And the whole idea of developing these techniques for surface texture is that I would like to get to more and more complex shapes, some of which would have areas that I can't reach into and can't finish by hand. So I still wanna pursue the sprayed techniques but for now, the hand techniques are working really well and I can't wait to see what some of them look like with glazes. We do have one finished 3D printed piece that uh, has a glaze on it. I actually got this into a crystalline firing that um, I did with an, another potter and I really like this. These, this result is fantastic. I love this glaze on a planter. It's gonna go really well with um, one of the big jade succulents that I have to put in it. But overall, it's been a very, very exciting week, albeit there was some catastrophic failure that was a little frustrating after 22 hours of printing to have it come out beautiful, one of the most beautiful prints that I've done to date and then spray the slip onto it and it all collapsed and fell apart. That was a little rough, but it's all good. Uh, we'll move forward. Uh, I, I just can't wait until the day when I can be making these bigger designs uh, custom, each one a one-off, which is the beauty of the 3D printing technology. Get some more complicated shapes in the mix and then have some really beautifully finished, huge pieces that will max out the printer. Uh, that'll be a day that's really exciting. So stay tuned for that. I have a lot more things on the horizon. Uh, I hope the next video will have to do with crystalline glazing, but we'll have to see um, what actually happens in the next couple weeks. So thanks for watching. This is Kurt from Hammerly Ceramics and have a good day.